it's Abominatrix from the Moxie Skate Team. Welcome to Moxie Skates Live. I'm super excited to be here. I'm glad you're here. We're gonna take a little bit and let people join in the chat and kind of get themselves settled in, get your cup of tea or put on your roller skates or whatever you're doing, it's all good. Um, let me tell you a little bit about myself before we get started and I'll give people time to kind of get in and get comfortable and put on their skates and stuff. But my name is Abominatrix. Um, I have been skating for about 11 years now. I started skating as an adult and it was not the easiest transition for me to make personally. Um, I found it very challenging. And one of the very first things that I had to learn how to do was to learn how to stop. As much as I wanted to be really fast and do all the cool things and play roller derby and be tough and go fast and spin hard, I was struggling to stand up. And then after that, I was like, once I could go, I was greeted by a wall, kind of slowly and awkwardly, which was nice, but it helped me realize like I actually needed to learn how to stop. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're talking about stops. Um, but a little bit more about me as a skater. I like to um, skate outdoors. I started skating in Hawaii. I lived out there for a long time. And while I was there, that's where I started to skate. There was no roller rink. I had to learn outside. And there luckily are a lot of abandoned hockey rinks out there. And uh, I used to go out and meet this big group of skaters and we'd sweep off all the BBs and broken glass and practice skating out there together. And that's where I learned a lot of my fundamentals. And when it comes to skating, the fundamentals are key. And a key, again, is stops. So when you want to be a solid skater and you want to have that trajectory of like great things, whatever it is in your head, whatever you envision for yourself, uh, for some people it's dancing and for other people it's roller derby and for some people it's uh, street skating or park skating. You got to know how to stop because these skills are implemented in every form, in every single one of those forms of skating. You got to learn how to step. We got to learn how to control ourselves. And that leads into uh, style, tricks. You can blend uh, little fundamentals of stopping into style. So you can build on this skill as if it were the most gnarly, cool trick that you could ever learn. And one of my friends, Nick the Medic and Dita, uh, both on the skate team were, make jokes about that being like your number one skate trick is knowing how to stop. So. I'm excited to share with you, that's for sure. I mean, we're here in one of my favorite places near my house. This is my secret skate park. It's really a parking lot, <laughs> right? But I also think it's on theme. We got a beautiful waitress here in roller skates and a super cool guy giving a thumbs up. Anytime you feel uneasy, just look at this guy. He's giving you a thumbs up. You got this, you got this. All right, so. I wonder how much time we have. Are we doing okay? Can I talk a little bit more about myself or should I move on and tell you about what we're actually doing today? Yeah? All right, let's do it. So, welcome to Moxie Skate Live. I am Abominatrix, AKA Abom from the Moxie Skate Team. And today I am here to teach you about stops. The key to it all, how to stop. Once you start, you got to learn how to stop. You know, the sun comes up and then the sun sets and this is the circle of life, learning how to stop on your skates. So the skills that I want to go over today with stops is demystifying the toe stop drag. Okay. And then I want to talk about stance for stops, how we structure our body to stop successfully. I also want to share one of my favorite stops, which is the T-stop, which can also be used for a speed variation. And then we want to talk about plow stops and turn and toe stops, putting down our toe stop when we're skating backwards. 
where our weight is and how to make that effective. So we'll start with the toe drag, okay? The toe drag is something that um, when you're starting out as a skater, it's our inkling that we wanna go in this direction. Even this beautiful iconic painting is even doing the toe stop drag. She's doing it too. We've all, we, we can do it. In a rink, it's, it's, it works, but when you're outside and skating in your neighborhood or around town, which a lot of us are doing right now, it's exceedingly challenging to maintain control, to maintain your balance, and actually have an effective stop. So let's break down the toe stop drag and why there's some pros and cons to it. So the toe stop drag is when we're traveling in a forward direction our feet are slightly staggered. My front foot, my lead foot, has weight going through all four corners of my foot. So you can see that there's a bend in my foot here and that makes this, this back foot pretty light. And from there, you're setting your toe stop down and you're pulling it in using your thigh muscle, your inner thigh muscle and your quads. So this position, tends to straighten us up. That puts us out of balance and puts us into a really vulnerable position when we're outside skating. In a rink, it might work because it's very smooth and we're not traveling necessarily very fast. But when you're outside, there's a lot of elements involved. There's gravel, there's cracks, there's uneven pavement. You need to be able to quickly transfer from one foot to the other. A toe stop drag locks you into a position and has your knee locked. And now I'm in my most vulnerable position. I'm very straight. We wanna keep a lower center of gravity while we're on skates. So have any of you guys ever gotten into like kind of a pickle where you're skating and having a good time and then all of a sudden you're like, Aah! and you're trying to drag that toe stop and things are uneasy and you're not really slowing down. I've been there. If you've been there, I want you to go ahead on the comments, put a little emoji, give me like some sparkles, some, we're gonna break through, we're gonna make some magic happen. We're moving away from that toe stop drag and we're moving into some solid skills. Yeah. Sparkle, 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 sparkle. I mean, I've been there. If I was in the chat, I'd be sparkling it up because I have definitely been there and been in kind of a loosey-goosey weird situation with that toe stop drag. But let's now move on and talk about the stance that we want for stops. Stance for stops has to do with keeping and moving our weight from being between all eight corners of the feet and so what I mean by that is if we were to set ourselves up in our skater stance, the ideal skater stance is a staggered stance. For me, my right foot is forward. My left foot is slightly back. My knees have a micro bend in it. Esther talks to you all day long. Micro bend, micro bend, micro bend. Bend those knees, bend them more. There you go. Now my shoulders, knees, and toes are all in alignment. This is important because now I can shift into my lead foot, okay? So right now we're in all eight corners of our feet. My weight is pretty distributed between, and then I'm gonna practice shifting my weight over, shoulder, knee, and toe into that front foot. And now I feel a little more secure. So if you're feeling secure in that front foot, yes. That is what we want. So if you come a little closer and just take a peek at it, I'll do it again. So setting it up, staggered stance, knees are bent, shifting forward into all four corners. You see how there's a nice angle through my ankle. My weight is going through the ball of my foot. If I wanted to roll forward, I definitely could. And my back foot is really light. That is the beginning, the bread and butter of all of your stops. You need to be able to shift your weight from all eight into four, lead it through, and find an edge for a stop. So 
dance for stops. Just to remind you, we keep it staggered. We're in all eight. Shift it to four points, four corners on this lead foot. That back foot is loosey goosey and ready to do something awesome like T stops. Oh, T stops. Okay, okay. So if you haven't already and you're feeling what we got going down, go ahead and leave a little something in the comments. If you have a question, put it there. We'll check it after, we'll get to it. But now that we have stance for stops, let's add a stop. Let's add a stop. That's why we're here. Let's talk T-stops. T-stops, oftentimes people see it and hear it and they think that the foot has to be strictly in a T and that is an illusion. What we want to have is a strong, stable footing through all four corners of that front foot. And then this back foot turns and it creates an L shape. So if you wanna come over and take a look at the L shape that I like to stop in, it looks something like this. Oftentimes people, the misconstrued theory is that it's all the way closed, things are straight, and this is how we stop. But when we're outside, we want to build in success. We want a nice bend in the knee, this bend in the knee here. That gives you the energy to actually maintain your balance, maintain your direction safely, but it gives you the ability to add friction into your stop. So how do we stop? We've got our stance set up into our T stop, but how do we really create and generate the power to stop? And that has to do with dragging that back foot, not just the foot, not just pulling the foot in, you're pulling it in using your inner thigh muscles. Oh, those satirious muscles that pull in that inner thigh, you're pulling that together to create your stop. So your stop is really rooted in your hips and it's transitioning through that soft bend in the knee to give the power to the friction of the wheels to stop. So we're traveling forwards, or let me set that up. I rushed it because I just wanted to stop so bad. I'm staggered. I'm rolling. Weights forward in all four corners. I'm pivoting at the hip. My foot is set down. And as I'm traveling, I'm pulling in, using my inner thigh muscles, using my abs, I'm engaging the glute of that lead foot as well to pull in and come to a slow and maybe even a stop. So I'm traveling forward, rotating at the hip, wheels are down and I'm pulling through. Now, this is really great information, but I'm sure some of you are having a little issue. Maybe your feet are touching, but they're doing this jumping around thing where you're traveling forward and things are kind of bumping. Or maybe this inside wheel is dragging and you're not really stopping. I got a solution for you. Yeah, you're right. That feels weird. It doesn't feel like you're stopping because you're not. You're not giving enough friction to the ground. And also you're sacrificing some safety in the ankle. Do you see how this sets you up to be really vulnerable through the ankle, so we want to correct it. And we'll correct it by setting all four corners down, and we're going to transition and imagine dragging your pinky toe and showing the belly of your skate to that forward direction. So we're down low, we push off, our <laughs> hips open, we're dragging the pinky toe like an eraser and pulling it all in. It's going to feel like you're doing like one of those, what was it in the 90s, those thigh masters? I don't know if any of you uh, are that old, but if you know what a thigh master is, give me an emoji. I want to see it. So back to toe stop, T stops. We're traveling forward. Now we have our little tip where we're dragging the pinky toe and our outside edges which are these wheels here correlated with our pinky toe. These are what are on the ground. Our belly of our skate is just up a little bit. 
You'll notice these two wheels are free. They're not really on the ground. That's a yes. I wanna see that from all y'all. You'll look a little funny, maybe like a crab. Who cares? You're learning to stop. <laughs> Pull it in until you start to slow down. Many people with a T stop. The first thing that happens is you get that little waddle where that inside edge is clicking. We've corrected that. We've got a pinky toe down. We're dragging and pulling through, really engaging our inner thigh muscles, pulling in our belly. Eyes are ahead. Trust your body to do the job. We're sending energy down with a bend in the knee to create that friction. All right. We're pulling it through. And now I want to start to hear that friction. So if you're getting a little scoot in it, a little like, like an eraser dragging on the ground. Awesome. This is the drill. You're drilling in your stop. Oftentimes people ask me, hey, A-bomb, how are you so flowy? It's the stops. It's learning how to control your stops. That really makes a difference. Okay, so the drill, it's a workout. We're set up, we're moving forward, and we're dragging the toe stop. We're setting ourselves forward and we're dragging, not the toe stop, I'm sorry, the wheels, those outside wheels. You can hear that chatter. That's good chatter. A scoot, a little scoot. That's cool too. You don't have to do as many of these in a row as I'm doing, but if you can get a goal of three in a row on one foot and three in a row on another foot, awesome. If that feels good, I want to challenge you to doing it for however long you wanna do, however many of them you wanna do, but I challenge you to three minutes spread out you can break it up however you want, but I challenge you to three minutes a week of practicing your T-stops. I guarantee you, if you devote just that amount of time to building a skate skill, you will meet yourself in your mind's eye in a goal. It's gonna happen because you're putting in the time. 1% gain maximizes over time, right? Okay, so if you liked what I'm telling you about toe stop or not toe stop but i'm sorry t stops and even t slows where we slow ourselves down with it i would love it if you gave this video a like if you haven't already if you have any questions about t stops or t slows throw it in the comments i'm happy to check it after the class is done and we'll hang out a little after and address some stuff, maybe go over some demos if you have any questions. All right, appreciate you. Let's get on to the next skill. So once you learn T-stops, you really start to pay attention to having a lead foot and being able to alternate it because you're practicing these on both sides, okay? Sometimes, you wanna stop in a slightly different way. Maybe you have a little bit more time. Maybe you wanna shave speed, but maintain control. Maybe you don't wanna take all eight wheels off the ground. So a plow stop is something that's a fabulous alternative. People who have skied in the past probably know what a plow stop is. It's where your feet move from being generally parallel, maybe staggered just a touch, to traveling out with the toes and coming back around almost like a pizza slice. Do you guys, did anybody watch the bubbles that Estro did? Give me some emojis, show the love. If you watched that episode where she talked about the bubbles, okay? The bubbles are the building block to a plow stop, okay? In a bubble, I'm sorry, in a plow stop. For the drill, because this is just a drill, an exercise for you to practice the fundamentals of a plow stop. We're gonna start from a V position. We're gonna bend the knees slightly. And then we're gonna send the energy out where we start to travel forwards. 
but before my feet travel past like the width of my shoulders, I'm angling them back in. Okay, so I've got a little bend, a little plie, toes are out, and now we're using those inner thigh muscles, pulling them back in, right? That's the bubble that we were working on with Estro the other day. So from here, when we get to the top of the bubble, not even the top, halfway point, when we get to the halfway point, and I'm walking it back in, when we get to that halfway point, I want you to shift your weight ever so slightly into, for me, I'm gonna break with my right foot and I'm gonna keep myself sturdy on my left foot. And so I'm kind of putting a little bit more weight into this quad here as I'm coming around. And then in the right leg, I'm sending energy down through my hip, down into my heel. And the technical aspect of this, once I've sent that energy down, which is me pressing down, I'm pushing out through the heel. I imagine that there's a little tab right over here that I want to crunch down and move my heel to touch. It's invisible. We can't see it and everybody's is different. So yay. So we're down low, shifting the weight and we push through the hip, sending friction down through only the heel. We're isolating that. And that's the root of your plow stop. So I'm going to break this down even further for people who are having trouble and aren't quite there with the bubble to that weight shift to the friction let's walk it back and talk about the friction the friction of the plow stop is everything if you have your bubble down and then you're able to slightly shift your weight over to give a little more juice to that stopping foot the friction of the plow stop is square we're setting it down almost like um, its very own exercise okay we're in a squat shifting the weight over down shift or let me back up slightly <laughs> the setup is shoulders knees and toes my feet are not past my shoulders i'm gonna lower myself down shift my weight over and scoop pushing through the heel. So all I wanna do with this is practice pushing friction through my heel. So I'm down and I wanna practice on the other side, down, push, down, push. So I'm down, I push, down, I push. One movement leads into the other. The friction is through the heel only through the heels, traveling to that outside edge. And if you're really working it and you're sending that energy down, that energy is gonna make that little sound. And it's more important to work on the, um, the fundamentals of that friction, which is basically a squat, where we get down and we push it through the heel through the heel means transferring the weight from the hip down through that knee. That's why we're changing levels and we push it and send it through the hip. So that's the real juice behind a plow stop is this momentum, this friction. So what I would recommend is take it as a dynamic exercise where you're building the strength up for a plow stop. Do that. Not only will your stops thank you for it, your body dynamically as a skater will grow. So again, if, if you're still working on the bubble, work on the bubble and separate the skills of a plow stop into chunks so practice the bubble separately practice the squat with that weight shift and that friction through the heel separately okay 
do those things, intervals that work for you. And then I challenge you to take the challenge to do those two dynamics separately for three minutes. You can spread it out however you like through the week, but give yourself that personal challenge, okay? Somewhere in that, when you break things down into their fundamental structures, it will start to come back together. You can revisit this video. You can see how it comes together for you. But I highly suggest that something like a plow stop, which is really a combination of three movements, get broken down and exercised in their separate pieces. Just to build success for you as a skater, because you're growing and your skill set is developing. So why not develop the strength? Woo! All right, let's take a deep breath. Plow stops make me sweaty. I'm gonna take a drink of water. If you have any questions about the plow stop, please leave it in the comments. Um, you can leave it in the comments after this is saved and posted, or you can comment right now in the chat. I'm all about it. If this is making sense to you, throw in an emoji. I wanna see some rainbows or whatever you want. It's cool. Okay, so we've talked about stance, we've talked about T-stops, we've talked about plow stops, and that has a lot to do with making the friction for your stops come from your wheels. But what about our toe stops? Ah, we already learned that maybe this toe stop drag isn't ideal for street, isn't ideal for that neighborhood push around, maybe great for the rink, but when we're skating outside, what if I want to stop while I'm going backwards? How do I toe stop? Stop, turn and toe, turn and toe, turn and toe stop. Okay. Again, this is a breakdown of multiple different skills. Estro just did a live yesterday. So if you go back and you cite that live video, she's talking about, pardon me, backwards skating. When she's talking about swinging it around and leading through the hips, has a whole lot to do with the turn and toe, okay? So let's just practice in space where we find ourselves. Our feet are staggered. My right foot slightly forward because I lead with my right. And I'm going to imagine that I am opening a door. I'm just going to open a door and while my shoulder is rotating and my eyes are following that doorknob, I'm going to pivot my heel and set it down. So I'm here, pivot, set, set. So sometimes it, people say, I'm a waitress and I'm traveling and I'm turning around. So once you're backwards, you're going to get into a nice runner's lunge. That's where your front foot is a nice little 90 degrees there. My weight is in this foot. My weight is going through all four corners of this foot. When I stop in a turn and toe, you stop with your rear brake first. So this one is you're traveling on. This one's nice and loose and ready to put a toe stop down. To get the most friction out of this, we have to, just like we learned with the other stops, bend the knee, okay? That's gonna give you that friction on the toe stop as we're traveling backwards. You can get more friction by bending the knee and pushing into the toe stop to slow and stop yourself. So this will slow you and then when we feel like we're in control, we can put down that other toe stop to come to a stop. So in movement, it would look something like this. I'm traveling, I rotate, set. Now I lower myself and set down my toe stop. So we take it in sections, okay? So I'm traveling forwards. Step one, rotate. Step two, set. Step three, toe stop. I slow or I stop. If I want a little more juice to stop, I can throw down my other toe stop. I'm in a runner's lunge. Okay. Turn and toe, set it, 
stop it. Maybe I throw down that other one for some extra stopping power, okay? Traveling forwards, turn, stop, stop. I personally find that I stop with one toe stop pretty sufficiently. I work really hard to make sure that I'm never sacrificing too much of one foot while I'm skating outside or too much of both feet while I'm skating outside. I want to be nimble. I want to be able to move around. I need other options because anything could happen. You know, maybe I'm approaching a stop sign and the guy who should be stopping, maybe he's not stopping. I need to be able to get into a position where I can put on the brakes really fast while I'm traveling backwards. I put myself in a really safe position where if I'm traveling fast and this is slowing me, I can get even lower and be in kind of a stable position to maybe change positions and go the other way. So turn, toe, stop. Traveling forward, turn, toe, stop. I want to turn the other way. Oh, that's my bad side. Da, 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 da. So if I'm here and I waitress and I turn around, then that means that I need to be waitressing and turning around. Oh, I can follow my own advice. Waitress, toe, stop, set it down. Waitress, toe stop, turn it down. Oh man, got it, da 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 da, right? If you have some of this, let's see an emoji about it. Boo! <laughs> so turn and toes, weights in, that, weights in that front foot. We are going to waitress turn, set, toe stop. So now I'm in this front foot, I'm gonna waitress turn, set, toe stop, toe stop, okay? Now I'm in this position, I'm gonna waitress turn, set, toe stop, toe stop. I'm feeling good about this now. Turn, set, toe stop, toe stop. It's the turning and the resetting in this staggered position that's gonna give you the most control while you're traveling backwards. And remember from Estra's video yesterday, her backward skate video, the weight is going through the booty while we're traveling backwards, which means we gotta weight over that front foot, all four corners, so that way we're free to put that back toe stop down. Just lift the heel, that's all it needs. Little lift, push it into the ground. So we're in this position, weights through the heel, lift, push down through the toe stop. I feel strong. I feel like I did a bunch of squats. I feel like I did a bunch of lunges, a bunch of thigh masters. I feel great. Let me just wipe this little sweat off my brow. Throw a little emoji up if you get a sweaty brow. I'm into it. But let's uh dee 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 dee. So toe stops, turn around toe stops, T stops, stance for stops. We talked about the toe drag. So the big question is, oh my God, hand sanitizer. Let's, let's not be gross, you guys. Let's hand sanitizer. Um, yeah, so be protective, especially if you're gonna touch your face. All right, so we went through all of these super rad skills that have to do with stopping. It's using our edges, how we can use our wheels to stop ourselves, how we can use our toe stops more effectively. We get more surface area on the toe stop when you are traveling backwards and doing the toe, uh, turn and toe. You, more surface area of that toe stop is actually coming into contact. So that means more surface area, that means more friction, which means more control in your stop. The other awesome thing about the turn and toe compared to the toe stop drag is our stance. This is a very vulnerable stance. Remember, knee is locked, I'm up really high, that's vulnerable. A turn and toe where we're traveling backwards, much safer. I'm in a lunge. I have control over the most surface area of my toe stop. That's ideal.
So I would definitely recommend the turn and toe stop over a toe stop drag, okay? Um, but let's talk about the really big question that I get a lot, which is what is the best emergency stop on my roller skates? And I would have to say there's two. The T stop, that T stop, I love it. I get to control my speed, I can slow myself down or I can bring it to a complete stop. That's an awesome one when you're out around town. Maybe you have to stop at an intersection before you can cross the street. Maybe there's an obstacle out in front of you and you're like, I don't know how I'm going to deal with that. Let me just shave a little speed off with my T stop or my T slow it down. Okay. The other ideal stop that's very fast, extremely effective on hills, traveling around town, making quick stops in and around traffic is the um, that turn and toe stop and remember it's broken down into almost three pieces we're traveling we turn set then we stop to get the most power out of it if you are trying to make it all one motion we're traveling back into this stance of the locked knee again and trying to hurry up and make everything count really quick. Knock it off. I love you, but save yourself. Get low, learn these other skills, practice them dynamically, start where you can, and that's okay. And then build on it and challenge yourself to three minutes. Of any one of these skills, of any part of this skill, I challenge you to kind of head in that direction. So, um, I hope you enjoyed what I brought today to this lesson. If you have any questions, I'm super down to hang out after the chat and kind of figure that out. But thank you so much for being here on Moxie Skate Live. You guys are amazing. It's people like you, the community that makes this the thriving, accessible tool in discovering yourself, discovering your neighbor. It's, it's community driven even though it comes from the individual endeavor, that individual challenge and journey that you're on, that you're exploring and educating for yourself, good for you. I'm excited and I hope to get to know you more. I really do. Um, you can follow me on uh, Instagram as Abominatrix. You can follow my YouTube channel Abominatrix um, and I will be here more giving lessons to you and sharing what I know with my skills and fundamentals to share with you and I appreciate and value you so very much so um, if you've enjoyed this video and you want more videos like this subscribe subscribe to this channel you can hit the little bell over there on the side it'll give you uh, little notifications that live events are happening and then get in the chat get active ask questions if this is already posted Awesome. Leave comments below because we will answer all of them. Okay. I'm Abominatrix. You can find me on Instagram, on YouTube, or right here at Moxie Skate Live. Uh, thank you so much and have a good day. <laughs> and if you're still here and you want to hang out and you want to chat and you have questions, you want me to break stuff down, I'm going to get on the chat right now and just see who's around and what questions you may have and i can answer them for you if you'd like is that cool are you into it let me grab my phone where is the life oh i just realized that um i'm live and singing and i'm not a singer so yeah oh my gosh I'm looking at myself looking at myself hi Sophia Rose and all those hearts what's the best way to stop if you're overweight I'm just asking I have my opinion but I wanted to hear yours I think that you really need to make sure that you are feeling stable okay stable in your stance so that way you're applying whatever the friction is that you need to stop um, 
So I like a T-stop. I think that's the safest, most grounded way to stop, and I highly recommend it. I'd love to know how you like to stop, so please tag me. I'm Abominatrix, and you tell me, Allison Smith, how you like to stop. I want to know. Okay, let's see. Awesome, awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Mm, mm, mm. I'm looking through some stuff and I'm trying to find some questions. Everyone's so awesome. Look at this like great energy that's on here. People are doing it. Mm -mm -mm. Turnaround toe stop? Question mark. It's crazy. The turnaround toe stop is something that is, sure, it's intermediate. But to get to intermediate, you got to practice the skills. So I would highly suggest backing it up, maybe watch the last video on backwards skating and add and implement to that your toe stop while you're going backwards. And then you can work on transitions. And I think there's a video about that. And if there isn't, we're going to make one. But um, then work on your transition turning from forward to back. I like to envision that I'm a waitress. And when my right, not my right foot, but when my lead foot is in front of me, I'm holding a tray and I'm turning around to that back foot and setting it down. I'm turning around to that back foot and setting it down. And then once I'm backwards, that's when I can apply the toe step. But you wanna make sure you're traveling backwards and your uh, wheels are not compromised. You're, being nice and brave and staggered and then setting your toe stop down like a runner's lunge or a runner's start is what I would recommend. Okay, for me doing the turnaround toe stop, uh, <laughs> I throw myself around and slam my toe stop down. I find it very useful. Hey, like I said, to each their own, but I recommend making sure that you set your stance low and be a little bit more grounded. It'll give you the opportunity to either have a really powerful fast stop in an emergency. If you're skating outside, there's a lot of variables, but also you can blend something into that if you're stacked and ready for your next move. If we're down low and staggered, you can move into whatever your next move might be, whatever it is. But this turn and immediately to a toe stop, I find highly risky, but if it's working for you and you loving it and you're feeling amazing and inspired and beautiful, I don't want to take that away from you. You do you. Do, do, do. Still moving forward. Okay. So when I try to turn around from the turnaround toe stop, I never end up having backwards momentum. I'm still rolling forwards. Oh, that's such a good question. Okay. So when you turn around and you're still moving forwards, I find that so intriguing. I want to kind of find it. Let me see. I don't know. Are you perhaps trying it in place? For me, a good rule of thumb, when I am traveling forwards, just to talk about stance and a forward momentum and a backwards momentum, when you're staggered and your knees are bent, your shoulders are over your knees and over your toes, you're gonna travel forwards, especially if you pelvic tilt, like Elvis, Elvis pelvis, you're gonna roll forwards. If you lower it back down and Rihanna, you're gonna roll backwards. The reason being is the hips, this pendulum that's here, this is the center of gravity. Okay, that's what's controlling your forward and backwards direction. So if you're turning around and you're still rolling forwards, bring it on a back, let that weight travel through your back hips and just play with that. Again, when we talk about skill breakdowns, perhaps for you, the skill breakdown is practicing that pelvic dynamic. Elvis pelvis sends you forward Rihanna back takes you all the way back. You know what I mean? That's my rule of thumb. I coined it. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't, but I'm pretty confident in that rule of thumb. All right, what else we got? I'm gonna scroll down to 
towards the bottom. My boyfriend said to quit calling myself a beginner. I'm now officially intermediate. All right, Sil Silver Squiggles, congratulations on reaching intermediate. You're amazing. Okay, what else we got? Start slow and build up the skill. That's what's up. That is the key right there. Mm -mm -mm. We talked about rolling forwards and rolling backwards. Exactly. It's about how comfortable you are with stopping. Uh, turn around. Stow stops are so hard. Again, you're right. Master backwards. Play around with going backwards. Get comfortable being backwards. Then work on your transition from frontwards to backwards. This again goes right back into the root of breaking things down into chunks. So you're right. Your urge to focus on your backwards momentum and build, love it. You should do that. Yes, this video will be on the Moxie channel. <laughs> will this video stay up for me to practice with? I hope so. Come back and visit this video again. If you love it, like it. We're into it. <laughs> Your answer, the yep, okay. This is fun. Okay, uh, lead foot is technically the front when it's in the back because you're going backwards direction. Oh, thank you, Ditas. Clarifying some stuff for people in there. I love it. Uh, I just got my skates. I'm super excited. I'm excited for you. When do T-stops or toe stops, okay. When I do T-stops or toe stops, I end up going in a different direction and not stopping efficiently. How do I prevent this? I think the reiteration of practicing the birth of a forward direction, the birth of forward momentum versus the birth of backwards momentum, okay? So jump back to that backwards video, play around with that a little bit, but also just to remind you, we set it up, we're staggered, knees are bent, elvis pelvis, that sends the weight into the ball of the foot of your skate. And if we lower ourselves down a little micro bend to reset and we give it a little Rihanna back, we're gonna roll backwards because now we've put the weight through that rear axle, that rear truck. So that little technical aspect, warm up with it. Give yourselves three minutes a day of Elvis pelvis, Rihanna back, three minutes. And trust me, comment back on here and tell me how that affects you. I'd love to know. It blew my mind and rocked my world and I've never been the same ever since. Okay, awesome. Well, this looks really good. People are stoked. Yeah, Rihanna warm up. Thank you, yes, yes, yes. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. I hope to be back again soon. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up. Any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm down to go back and answer everything. All right, have a beautiful day. Bye.